Welcome to another tutorial. We're going to go over how to do simple fillings uh, and complex class one fillings. So two different methods for the same type of procedure. One just simpler for if you're under a more basic uh, fee structure and you have to do things faster and one for if you've got the time to be fancy. So let's get it rolling. So obviously, uh, the class one composite is often seen as a simple thing, but it's actually quite technical. So in general, you want to, so in general, you want to error braid because one of the biggest causes of uh, staining around composite resin is plaque or debris, in, particularly in the fissures or on the occlusal surface, and you can't remove this with etch. So, using an air abrasion device to go around and clean off all of the margins is really, really useful and it, well, it makes the procedure faster. That's the first thing because you're not trying to get stain and plaque and debris off a tooth that's really difficult to get off. But mostly it, it uh, gives you much greater chance of having no staining. So you can etch enamel, but you can't etch plaque and you can't etch debris. And there's a huge amount. And if you want to see how much is on a tooth, get a bit of, uh, plaque indicator dye and paint it on the top of the tooth and then see how much pink there is. So after having done the air abrasion, then we go and etch just the enamel because I'm using a self etching bonding agent called SE Bond 2, has a primer and a bond. Uh, we want to thin both of those so that we don't have a thick layer of cement showing on the x-ray. And then we're going to use a little bit of flowable in the base of the cavity and this is to uh, reinforce that bonding agent because the C factor or the shrinkage cavity factor for class ones is the worst of any type of cavity. So once we've filled it up to the enamel layer, then we can go ahead and we can build one cusp at a time if we're trying to do a more fancy design. So if we're doing a fancy design, then we would do one cusp at a time. Now, yes, I know there's a tiny piece of hair off the micro brush. Uh, you get these in your fillings too. You just can't normally see them because this is massively magnified. So uh, for those of you who are going crazy, you can put a thing in the comments, I don't care. Uh, and then we do the second cusp. So we get the basic shape of cusps with the micro brush. Uh, and then we use the, the tip of the probe, but the probe is leaning on the inclines of the existing cusp and that's how you get the shape right you're using the probe sitting against the existing cusp uh, here i'm doing the there's a obviously in this particular tooth there's the fifth cusp that little small one on the disto buckle uh, and you can see once again i'm using the probe to pinch off the excess so you can't push composite resin but you can kind of drag it and pinch it off so you push on both sides of a little blob of composite and that gives you if you push on one side and then the other, it forms like a little triangular top, and that's how you get that kind of pyramid-shaped cusp. Uh, when I'm trying to be fancy, I'm going to go around one cusp at a time, uh, and that gives you the best fissure. And a fissure pattern is just two inclines meeting. It's not actually, like you don't design a fissure, you just design the inclines, and where the inclines meet, that's when you have a fissure. So if you go around doing one cusp at a time like this, and then you cure, then uh, you can do a little bit of tint if you want to, and it gives you this supernatural uh, tooth shape. So the trick with tint, so if you're going to use tint, then use a little bit of SE primer and bond on the final surface of the restoration just to give something for it to stick to. And then use a very small amount of stain in the, the pits in the middle of the fissures and you drag it around. And that's how you get uh, like delicate staining. If you do too much, then it looks terrible. So that gives you sort of the more uh, three-dimensional perfect shape. Still not particularly time consuming and we put a little bit of glycerin over it to cure the oxygen inhibited layer right at the end. So now we're looking at, okay, well that's fine. You can see a lot of those cases on social media where they've put a lot of effort into all of the details. But what about if you work in an insurance practice or you don't have high fees, you can't spend a lot of time so we can still use a very similar technique, but we just kind of simplify it. So, you know, we prep, we air abrade. Air, abrading, air abrasion makes the process quicker because it helps remove debris and zinc oxide eugenol and stains and so on. And then we can etch the enamel. And then once again, I'm going in with my SE primer and my SE bond. 
uh, to, and, and the reason I use them is because they have tremendously low levels of uh, post-operative sensitivity. So anytime someone uses total etch, the, the rate of post-operative sensitivity goes up. And then we cure, and then once again, the, the initial stages are the same. So we're putting some flowable in the base of the cavity, and we're going to cure that and reinforce uh, the base layer, and so that it's less likely as we get shrinkage to pull the bond off the, like if you do a bulk cure, you can pull the bond off the dentine, and then you get post-operative sensitivity. So pain on biting, sensitivity to hot and cold. Uh, in some cases, if it's really deep, I'll actually do multiple layers of flowable. So I'll do the full like base filling of the restoration with flowable. Flowable is fine as long as it's not under tensile strength or heavy occlusal load. So, you know, it's totally fine to use to fill three quarters of the cavity. It's got enough strength for that. You just don't want to have it supporting a marginal ridge. So you can see here, very similar to earlier, but instead I have now filled both lingual cusps with one lot of composite. And then once again, I'm still using the same shaping technique because it's actually faster than trying to adjust the occlusion later. The key with putting composite in is you've got to put slightly less composite than you think you need. So if you put in the right amount, you probably have too much. So, uh, so in this case, I've, you know, you put in, you look at how much you think you need, you put in slightly less than that, and then you, you know, cure it in position. And so this results in what is actually just the right amount. And you can see here, I'm basically doing very rough shaping. So once again, following the inclines of the tooth with the probe and, uh, but we're doing all three buccal cusps and both lingual cusps in, in a single visit. And then we cure and then instead of, you know, tinting you do for yourself, it's like enjoyable uh, if you like making it look more artistic. In this case, I've just gone straight to the primer and the bond. Okay, you put that on, you cure it and uh, then put some lubricant over the top to get hardening of that oxygen inhibited layer. So that's just two options. And that's, why, that's how I do class ones. Uh, why don't I just build it up and then grind it back? Because it takes ages to grind things back. So there's certain occlusions where if you build it up and grind it back, it takes forever. Whereas if you have the inclines going down, then your adjustment's super minimal. And in particular, it's in the fossa, not on the inclines. And so adjusting, a high spot on the inclines is much, much quicker than adjusting a high spot on the fossa. So uh, there's some tips for you on the class one composite. Thanks for watching.